So, yep, it looks like Arturia has been hiding a little secret audio input in the hardware of Microfreak since day one. It's compatible with any standard TRRS style jack, like the ones Apple used before they came up with the courage to kill a headphone jack, or adapters like these that let you plug in both a mic and headphones. And this newly discovered input can be used with the new vocoder firmware and oscillator Arturia just released. Along with the firmware, they're also releasing a limited edition white microfreak, which comes with a gooseneck microphone. But aside from the color, swan design, and bundled mic, there's no difference in functionality between the new microfreak and the old one. The gooseneck mic uses Microfreak's headphone output, but also has a headphone output of its own, so you can still use headphones alongside the mic. In this video, I'll take a look at what the new vocoder can do, how vocoders work, and how they're different from harmonizers and auto-tune, because they're not the same thing. We'll also process vocals and other types of audio, take a look at a few patch ideas. Before we start, a quick overview of Microfreak in case you're not familiar with it. It's a digital synth with up to four voices that share a single analog filter. Everything else works polyphonically. It has multiple synthesis engines or oscillator types, including virtual analog, FM, wavetable, carpal strung, a whole bunch of other options, and of course, the new vocoder. It does have an unconventional keyboard, which has polyphonic aftertouch, but it's PCB based, so it's flat and touch based. It also has a really nice generative sequencer and arpeggiator, and best of all, it's quite inexpensive at $300. I've covered it in full in a review with all its pros and cons, so I won't repeat everything I said here, I'll link to it below. Let's talk about the new vocoder engine. Vocoders are a relatively old invention based on analog technology invented in the late 1930s. Without getting too technical, here's how they work. Vocoders take your voice or any other incoming audio and pass it through several band pass filters, 16 band pass filters in the case of Microfreak, and then they apply those levels detected at those specific frequencies to a synth sound, a harmonically rich synth sound, passed through a second matching set of bandpass filters. These bandpass filters aren't looking for the pitch of your voice, they actually don't care, but rather for formants or vowel sounds. It turns out that vowels are actually different resonating frequencies in our vocal tract. Notice how as I pronounce different vowels, different frequencies resonate on the scope regardless of the pitch of my voice. Dead, deed, did, dod, Dud, dude, daw. Let me give you an example with the worst ever rendition of the alphabet song at the same exact pitch. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So unlike auto-tune or a harmonizer, which round your voice up or down to the nearest semitone but still requires some vocal skills, the pitch of your voice is practically irrelevant for the end result of what you play. Since vocoders were mainly designed to look for vowels, they typically have a harder time at detecting consonants, which is why, depending on what you say, what comes out of a vocoder may not be legible compared to, say, using a harmonizer or auto-tune. Vocoders apply a trick called hiss to get around that. We'll see that in a bit. Okay, let's take a deeper look at the vocoder controls in the Microfreak. The first thing you'll see here is a level detector. These three squares will tell you if you're speaking too loud or not. As I yell louder or speak louder, you'll see that it gets to unacceptable levels. As long as it's at one or two, you should be fine. The utility menu has a mic settings control, including mic gain. I adjust this manually. There's also an auto function which will uh, work well if your mouth is close to the mic. Since I'm a bit farther from this, I set this manually to about around here. Just like all the other engines in Microfreak, these three knobs give you various controls over the character of the vocoder. The wave knob controls the wave shape of the carrier waveform, meaning the sound we actually hear before it's passed through the bandpass filters generated by our voice. It moves from a sawtooth Sawtooth, hello, testing one, two, three, to a variable pulse wave, all the way to a very, very narrow 
pulse width, and then finally, when it gets as thin as possible, which I think actually makes things sometimes much more legible, there's a noise setting for, you know, if you want to freak someone out, that's probably where the main micro freak comes from. Then there's the timbre knob, which will shift the bandpass filters up and down, changing obviously the character of your voice. And depending on, you know, the, the frequency of your voice or the pitch of your voice, you want to set this to, again, whether something that's as legible as possible, or if you want to change the character of the sound, you can do that as well. So that is the timbre control. And then there's the shape parameter. Shape will make the bandpass filters are either very narrow or will gradually increase their width. And again, it's a matter of your preference for legibility and the timbre of the sound. Aside from these three main knobs, you have additional preset controls in the utility menu, unlike the overall mic settings or mic gain settings, which work across presets. And this gives you access to the hiss parameter I mentioned earlier, which is either high passed noise fed into your sound or actual sound from the room above 5K, again with a high pass mixed in with the sound of the vocoder. So in switched mode, just noise is injected and I can control the level of noise. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Low hiss and high hiss, testing, testing. And then the other option in hiss mode pass lets actual audio, like I mentioned, from the room go in through the mic above 5K to help legibility. Let's listen to that. I'll take the microphone away. Testing, 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 one, two, three. You can hear my voice again above 5K coming through the mic. I can reduce this level to make it less extreme and then play around with the levels until I find what's legible, and that is the hiss parameter. So those are the overall controls. Before I get to some patch ideas, maybe let's just listen to a few of the new presets that are bundled with this firmware. I won't go through all of them, but maybe just the interesting ones. So low battery is what happens when you're feeling very, very tired. And yeah, but these change. <laughs> quite a lot. That's one, two, three. So you can tell by the mod matrix, we're impacting filter cutoff here and a few other parameters with the LFO. Low noisy box. And yeah, this works obviously with the arpeggiator and sequencer. So I can say whatever I want and it will be arpeggiated. And the eyes. That seems fine. Shy timbre. Okay. Tremolo saw. Tremolo saw. Gliding box. Crying. PWM box. Low square box. By your command, you understand that I had to say this, right? And yep, yeah, the sequencer works as well. So those are the presets, a few tips that I stumbled upon and I thought I'd share as I was exploring this. Tip number one for clear articulation, like I showed you earlier, pitch doesn't matter as much as pronunciation. So make sure to take the time to pronounce things properly. The pitch will take care of itself. You're also better off using headphones because feedback from your speakers will make your sound ring out or feedback into total chaos, which can obviously be looked at as a good thing depending on what you want. But overall, if you want legibility, avoid having speaker output into the room. Another tip for legibility, it's hard to fine tune the patch parameters clearly when you're speaking in real time. I'd recommend recording your voice and then playing that back as a sample into Microfreak. Let's maybe hook up a black box and show you how that would work. So I'll take the microphone out and then hook up black box into the microphone input of this splitter. I'll link to a few of these 
in the description, by the way, then plug that into the audio input. So this will help give you a reality check for how legible what you're saying is. It's not that great, but um, yeah, if you play around with this, you know, you might be able to get to reasonable results. You can also go into the preset, play around with hiss. It's an important parameter. Experiment with playing chords versus single notes or octave intervals that may help legibility as well. So that may help explain why Daft Punk repeats the same lyrics every time. If you want increased legibility, consider mixing in your original voice with the vocoder audio. If you can sing unlike me, you can go all in. That's a great effect. If not, filter out the low frequencies, but perhaps not as aggressively as the hiss parameter. So while we've got this connected, let's try running other types of audio into Microfreak. Let's maybe take a beat like this, and then this one. So this beat through a vocoder will sound something very different. Or maybe this one. Yep, and that's how vocoders give you this mix between the spectral content of the modulator or source audio and the sound of the synth. So depending on the hiss parameter or how much of this you wanna mix into the vocoder sound externally, you'll get something that's either quite unlike the original sound or something close to it. Now, just for fun, I took Stutter Edit 2 from Isotope and applied a few of those waveforms to pink noise so I'd get everything across the frequency spectrum, then transfer the output to black box here. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like. So this is one of the rhythmic envelopes included there. And there are a bunch more. The nice thing about the way that they work is that they impact not just the levels, but also the spectral content of the noise, if that makes any sense. Let's maybe try this guy. Pretty harsh and can be filtered, but I think you get the idea. Let's maybe try a couple more. So Micro Freak doesn't have a complex LFO, but this is a nice way to use an external sampler to add one. A few more tips, maybe let's try this with the iPhone headphones, just to make sure everything works well. So let's do a sound test on this. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Works really nicely, even with the iPhone headphones. Yep, sounds good. And let's look at a few more tips. The only thing that I see I need to change is the gain. The mic is closer to my mouth and that's not a problem. Just go to mic gain and Reduce it a bit, let's maybe try this. It would be nice if there was a level meter here in this menu. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Yeah, maybe I took it down a little bit too much. Increase gain a bit. Let's go with this, one, two, three. That's pretty good. So when looking at what we can modulate here beside these three main parameters, which are obvious, I think that pitch works really nicely even just using this pitch bend pad. Aside from pitch bend and modulating pitch, let me just get back to my in it preset, I think that playing with glide can also make for very nice effects, especially if you're not in paraphonic mode. So yeah, anything from a very long glide will make a nice effect to maybe a faster glide to Now let's just freeze the frame right there. Take a look at the audio levels of the alphabet song I just recorded. On top is the audio I sent into my mic, and on the bottom is the output coming out of Microfreak. You can see the swings in levels on the output are much more pronounced than those on the input. So my next tip is consider applying aggressive compression to the output of the vocoder. Moving on, if no one is around you or filming you, especially if you have headphones on, making wacky or crazy swooshes and sweeps with your mouth can produce very interesting vocoder results. Um, 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 um. 
so weird sounds could be a replacement for a fancy sampler. And then finally, as per any synth sound, reverb and delay can add a lot as well. So just as an example, let's gradually bring in some reverb. And of course, delay doesn't hurt either, whether just a bit or a lot, could be nice. So that's pretty much it for the new vocoder feature and hidden input in the old Micro Freak and the new one in terms of pros and cons. Pros are obviously that it's a free update and it works with any TRRS type adapter. So if you already have a Micro Freak, you can either use it with what you have around the house, hopefully, or a cheap adapter. Like all of Micro Freak's sound engines or oscillators, it's a simplified version of a potentially much bigger area of synthesis. So does it have all the features of modern vocoders? No, but is it a good trimmed down version of one? For sure. On the hardware side, obviously color is a matter of taste. The microphone does the job nicely. The only thing is it's a bit too short. The auto gain settings work well for when you're up close to it, but if you wanna use it from further away, you'll need to adjust the gain settings manually and of course be in a quieter environment compared to what you'd need to be if your mouth was directly on the mic. Other than that, Micro Freak was prior to this and is even more so now an excellent synth, both for beginners interested in exploring different kinds of synthesis and for advanced users looking for an all-in-one portable package. If you want more pros and cons, check out my full review linked in the description. And if you're interested in more insights like the ones in this video, check out my ever expanding book available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful and don't forget to ring the YouTube bell after subscribing to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.